Yo, this is the Power Hour with Poopster and Prince. We are live. RealLibertyMedia.com. Ah, oh, we got a. Uh, I'm sorry, I had a crazy week so far. I started yet another new job. Um, hotel work. But uh, tonight we have a special guest. Uh, you want to introduce yourself, sir? Are you talking about me? Yes. What's your name? Okay, I was just making sure that you um, were hearing me. Yes, uh, we hear my you. My name is Rudin. Um, I'm just a privacy advocate. I'm all over social media, Twitter, Reddit, so on and forth. Uh, yes. We've been hanging out on IRC, pound Dogecoin, uh, Dogecoin. double pound altcoin, and of course, uh, pound the Holly Roger. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, that's pretty much uh, myself. Um, I've been into privacy ever since Snowden leaked those documents uh, regarding the NSA and the massive surveillance. Right. And ever since I joined the EFF, the FSF, um, I've been using free software for years already. Uh, reached to hopping, started from Ubuntu, um, moved it to Debian. Uh, now I'm using Fedora. And that's on desktop, on mobile devices, I use Android. And right. I also joined a guy called Thurston, who is the developer of Briar, that Tor powered um, instant messaging application that I keep shilling to you guys. Right. Um, and I run Lineage OS. I have F Droid. Uh, most of the applications that I run on every single handset that I own are free open right. source software. We're going to be talking a bit about that tonight. Freedoms. About uh, well, not F Droid, but um, we're going to be talking a bit a bit about uh, 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 what the fuck is free node? I forget free node. <laughs> Man, my brain's not working tonight. Um, the Free Software Foundation, whatever the fuck it's called. RLM. We're going to be talking about him later. But uh, that's cool. Yeah, you're uh, you're quite prominent in the privacy scene. So we're, we're, we're going to talk a bit about, uh, about privacy. Actually, uh, Edward Snowden's been all over the news recently because he published his memoirs and... Uh, I believe he's getting sued by the Justice Department now. I don't know if you saw that. That's pretty nuts. <laughs> I guess they're, yeah, they're I saw fucking that. butt hurt. Uh, I got to sue him for his money. <laughs> yeah. So for the book money. Why is privacy important, Rodden? Uh, I think privacy is a fundamental human right, and I think I I joined this um, train of thought ever since I attended these free open source software conference that takes place every mm. year in Brussels, uh, Belgium, called mm. FOSDEM, F-O-S-D-E-M. Oh, ah, okay. And, cool. and I was talking to one of the, sorry that I interrupt you. Um, I was talking to one of the organizers while I was volunteering, and we ended up in that um, opinion that there is no left and there is no right in politics there is only two types of people one the the first ones want to be free and mm -hmm. the others want these to want to subjugate others freedom to right. control them so privacy comes into the ground because those people who actually want to be free need to claim that privacy right by uh, embracing encryption protocols such as PDP, SHA-256, um, the Tor network, peer-to-peer -peer networks, mesh networks, so on and so forth. Just yeah. keep learning because it's, it's, it becomes a thing about sovereignty more than anything. Yeah, sovereignty, yeah. 
uh, because if if we if we don't have control over the data that we send back and forth, you know, end to end to end encryption, I think is extremely important. Um, you know, the platforms that we use obviously is very important as well. I mean, end to end encryption on something like WhatsApp doesn't mean much to me because that's that that's a program owned by. I don't know. Even though it is encrypted end to end, I still don't trust it because it's owned by Facebook. But um, there are myriad open source solutions out there besides, um, you know, WhatsApp, like Briar, you know, is a pretty interesting example. Um, even Wire here that we're talking over right now is, is a, you know, a decent example. Um, so what would you say uh, your preferred privacy applications are? Uh, of course, um, I do not like entirely Signal, Signal just yeah. because, um, of course, it's encrypted, and that's the end-to-end -end encryption protocol that WhatsApp embraced. It came from Open Whisper Systems, which, oh, by yeah. the way, Snowden endorsed really uh, openly. But what I have, um, what my, my field against uh, Signal is that it is still leaks metadata. Right, and, yeah. and metadata is as big of a deal as data itself. Because if you can connect somebody's uh, phone number and the timestamps of their messages, you can build up a case just use, using metadata. Mm -hmm. And even though signal developers have been brought to court and they've been requested for users data when such users have engaged in criminal activities, um, they cannot disclose any piece of data because it is end-to-end -end encrypted. So yeah, I, I do appreciate Signal, but I don't necessarily think it should be the gold standard, as, no, as, no, as no. them put it, because if, if we really want privacy, we need to put away entirely both the data and the metadata. And that is why it, it's very important that we embrace things like Briar because it does not have any phone number or um, a type of ID. Yeah, it's also, essentially just a key exchange that, that connects you, right? Yeah, correct. And also, PDP encrypted emails are wonderful, but PDP email um, encrypted are also um, flaw as Signal is because the subject line is still leaking some pieces of data. If you want to exchange information via PDP encrypted emails, you should not, for any given reason, disclose any sensitive information within the subject line. No, oh, yeah. That's the truth. Poops, is there anything to add? Any questions? Um, yeah, um, yeah, is, is privacy that important? I mean, well, we just do the common that. people, yeah, you know, really care about it, though? I mean, well, yeah, what would, what would, what do you think would make people care about privacy? Because obviously most, the general Joe walking down the street doesn't give a fuck, right? So what yeah. do you think would, would push people to adopt privacy-centric platforms? Is that a question for me or for yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for you. Oh, okay. Um, I think it, sadly, as sad as it sounds, uh, the average Joe will not embrace um, truly encrypted platforms until they get breached. It's the same case as it, as it happens with companies. Right. If you go into the info, info security space, you're going to keep hearing the same story over and over again, which is as follows. Until the company gets breached is when they dial up their infosec people, not before. No. Um, and what I'm trying to uh, bring up by this analogy is that it has to wait until somebody gets harassed by a man or their data gets stolen by a hacker right. or whatever case you may think of, and at that point is when they're going to realize, oh, I really need privacy because 
some somewhere down the road just to put an example um mm-hmm. somebody uh knew that i like to watch this type of pornography right, and right. and this is trauma on arg- argument uh, this is trauma on argument of oh i have nothing to hide yeah it's yeah completely um baseless it's back it's pointless Whoever says that they don't have nothing to, that they have nothing to hide, they just have no clue what they are talking about. And I'm very yeah. concerned because once they get breached or they get attacked or they get harassed by somebody, that's when they are going to realize. And unfortunately, it's going to be late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is true. You know, I, I we made this argument talking about. Um, VPNs uh, in an earlier broadcast, like uh, basically with uh, with VPNs, uh, you know they're obviously third third party companies, and you know they claim to be secure and everything, but you know historically speaking, any company that that feels the pressure of a regulatory agency, like you know let uh, let's ask uh, what is it? What's the one that they're pushing uh, that that FreeNode pushes? Uh, uh, private internet access. If they feel the pressure from an, from a regulatory entity, they're going to cave. Historically, all the private companies cave. So trusting something like that with your privacy is not necessarily a good thing to do. In in my opinion, what do you think about VPNs? VPNs are useful for um, um, some use cases, but they're not perfect at all. Um, I think. Um, Things like Tor or yeah. I2P are way more private and way more secure, although um, there is some ways that they can still trace you back somehow. Right, um, right, right. I think Fluffy Pony, who is the main maintainer of Monero, uh, has said this plenty of times. Privacy is not a, a state. It's not something that you'll do um, today and you're fully private. It doesn't work like that. Privacy oh, yeah. is granular. Privacy is a process. Privacy is something that you achieve throughout the months, if not years. And you need to keep reading. You need to keep learning. And most importantly, you need to keep sharing sharing, and becoming the sort of grassroots community in which we all achieve the common uh, goals for everybody together. That's the truth. That, that's words to live by. You know, we do need to, to work together as a community to, to create a world that's better for each of us individually. Uh, and, you know, privacy-centric platforms, uh, currencies, are, are all going to facilitate that and help it. So uh, I, I totally agree with that. I totally do. One of the um, my issue with a lot of these privacy tools and apps is for the, you know, the common normies to use, I think it's a little difficult for them, you know, to use uh, for wide adoption because it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of techy, you know, it's kind of... I don't know, I know a lot of, I mean, I was speaking actually to to my boss, my new boss today about WhatsApp, and and WhatsApp is pretty much the standard, well, Signal is too, I, I have some international contacts in Signal as well, but um, outside of Signal and WhatsApp, um, there isn't really much adoption, but Signal and WhatsApp have a large scale adoption for international communication, but not necessarily because of the privacy, just because it's, you know, a free way to, to, to make international calls, basically. Um, yeah. people don't usually think about the privacy aspect of it, but, you know, they should. Um, but at least they're, they're utilizing it, right? I guess. Yeah. yeah as long as you're baking the privacy stuff and make it easier to use and, um, it would catch on more easily. Yeah, Briar, I think, is great. Um, I like Briar a lot. But uh, as far as uh, mainstream adoption, it, it definitely has some development that needs to take place. I mean, uh, if anybody doesn't know about Briar, uh, do you know the, what, what's the website for Briar, Rodden? Uh The website for Briar is Briar Project, a uh, single word. Well, it's two words, but you get what I mean. Mm-hmm. Dot O R D. Um, okay, Briar Project. They are on F. They're yes, O R D. Um, they're on F Droid, which is a free, libre, open source software 
uh, marketplace for Android devices. They're available also on Google Play Store. Um, and they release some alpha releases that are debug. Uh, and debug means that they mm -hmm. may have that box as the name is self-explanatory, which we can test out before yes, they yeah. hit a stop, a stable or better releases. Yeah, and if you, if you um, find any bugs, you can report them and, and support the development as well. So, uh, or if you have any suggestions yeah. for improvements, you know, uh, we're all in this together. <laughs> so, you know, that that's that's the beauty of free libre open source software that you're free to audit the code, and even if you're capable of coding, meaning that you're a programmer or mm -hmm. something like that, you may go ahead, modify the program, compile it. And run it uh, and run it as you think it should run, yeah, and you you're also open to uh, re redistribute repo. those flavors of that piece of software as well. Yeah, that's the beauty of open open source software, indeed. I mean, I I made um, a WeChat fork called Hor IRC. <laughs> I don't think anybody uses it, but uh, it's just the principle, really, that that you can do that with open source software. Um, you know, you have the freedom. To adopt it to your wishes, uh, as long as you you know give due credit. Not like uh, look at Apple and um, and uh, OS X. It's a BSD basically with with cool skins, and they release Darwin, uh, which is OS X open source, which doesn't have any of the cool features, and it's and it's only a way to like you know make it legal legally still open source software. That's the wrong way to do it, but. Uh, yeah, the right way to do it is where everybody knows the source, and yeah, it's it's just as I was saying, um, and the U.S. unfortunately, it's it, it's very sad for me. It has become quite a plutocracy. Mm -hmm. It's no longer a democracy. It's no longer a, a nothing. It's just a plutocracy, and for anybody that listens. Uh, what we're talking about, mm -hmm. plutocracy in a nutshell, um, is when companies are ruling the country, not yes. the parliament, not the president. And if you, mm, if you take a look, it's what's going on. Exactly. Amazon, Apple, Netflix. We have Domino's um, Pizza paving roads. I mean, what, how, the, <laughs> how is it not a plutocracy, right? <laughs> of course. And Amazon is, Amazon is the is one of the worst because Amazon has never paid federal taxes, yet they keep receiving subsidies from municipalities, states, and cities to build their warehouses because they're allegedly creating a bunch of jobs. Yeah, you're coming into my town, creating the jobs, and on top of that, that you're creating a bunch of money by the clock and giving you money to build those uh, warehouses. So right. I, uh, what I'm trying to communicate here is that I'm overpaying because I'm allowing you to get rich and on top of that I'm adding more and more money by subsidizing your business. Exactly, yeah. And and also they don't they obviously don't provide their um their employees with with even almost livable wages, which is which is quite a shame. Uh obviously Of course not. You know, it is like have, having public cancer because most Amazon employees are on food stamps. Yeah. Are you are you are, are you kidding me? You're the richest man on the planet. You're paying every employee fifteen dollars an hour. All the while, you're making. Uh, I may be wrong on this number, but all the while you're making. Around twenty six million every hour. Do twenty six million or, or twenty six times twenty four. Yeah. Now do that number times seven. Now do that number four, and you have the total that he makes in a single month, and you're paying them fifty dollars an hour. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, uh, you know, it's capitalism. You know, capitalism favors the ones with capital. Capitalism. It's like cream rising to the top. It's the system. Working, 
Yeah, it's, we, we, we talk about this. You know, it's, uh, it's the cream rising to the top. It's the way the system was designed to be run. And uh, it's, it, it works by exploit- exploitation. And that's how these companies or these individuals become billionaires is by exploiting or become rich in any regard is by exploiting someone. Uh, that's what I think we need to get away with or get away from as a society. Uh, I don't know what it'll take. But, you know, free and open software is definitely a, a, a good step towards that, that model, I, in my opinion. There is a motto within the Free Software Foundation that reads as follows. Free software, free society. Yeah. It's, it's very simple, but if you digest it, you're going to crack what I'm trying to imply by that message. I do. I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's uh, data is is the new the new landscape. You know, the the cyberspace is 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 the new real estate, and we have to claim that for for ourselves, because if if we don't, it's going to be owned by Spectrum, Comcast, AT and T, Doritos, whoever the fuck, and we won't have any control over what we see. It's just going to be a, an echo chamber like Facebook is. And, uh, you know, we can see it happening right now as we speak. You know, everything's controlled by ads, monetization. We're the product. You know, we've talked about this as well. Um, you know, we're the product for these companies. They, they make million dollars off of impressions and clicks. Uh, and it, it really shouldn't be that way. This, this, this whole model, the way it is, has to change somehow. Um, we need net neutrality back. Yeah, net neutrality is is important. You know, I, I actually here in California, uh, since they they uh, rolled back the net neutrality laws, um, they found bottlenecks in uh, internet service while the firefighters were trying to fight fires. They couldn't they couldn't communicate over uh, over wireless, and uh, that's because of net neutrality being revoked. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Very unfortunate. Okay, so we're going to go into a little segment here, Rotten. Uh, we're doing a new segment every week called Asshole of the Week. So here we go. All right, this is Asshole of the Week. This week, we have someone... That yeah, drum roll, please. <laughs> Actually, this is very appropriate because, um, and uh, I want to give you a talk or a chance to weigh on this as well, uh, Rodden, because it's, uh, it's a very interesting issue and it goes back to the, the whole Epstein thing and everything. So, the asshole of the week this week is none other than uh, Richard Stallman, RMS. And I'll tell you why. Okay. He quit, uh, MIT, didn't he? Well, he quit MIT, but but uh, what's important is he quit MIT because because. So let's He's see. He's a friend of Epstein, right? Well, you know, if you heard in the news, there was that um, the, it came out that Epstein d- d- uh, donated millions of dollars to MIT. Uh, apparently he was in uh, the uh, I forget what the name of the group was in MIT for um, for open source, but they they actually got rid of it and everything, so they, they're trying to cut all ties. Media lab, right? I think it's Media Lab at um, MIT. Something like that. Yeah, I, I'm sorry if I'm not uh, up, up on exactly because I don't I don't have that article in front of me. But I, um, anyways. So you know, as as uh, you people know, as as we know, RMS as Richard Stallman is is basically um, uh, a champion of free software. I mean, uh, if if you're on Freenode, uh, Freenode is is uh, a extension of FOSS, the free open software. Uh, what is it? FO, what does FOSS stand for, Rodden? Uh, FOSS, F O S S. Yeah. Free open source software. Oh, okay. So, yeah. um, I, I may sorry. I may add something else. Um, yeah. I think Richard Stallman, by the way, was one of the big proponents or, or advocates for this uh, differentiation. Uh, oh, for I'm the record, that, yeah. 
for the record, uh, I'm not an English native speaker. I apologize for my accent or, or whatever mistake I make. But point being, um, he was saying that free open source software is kind of ambiguous uh, because free in the English language means like free beer. And when we're talking about free open source software, we're not talking about freemium a freemium piece of software is something that is given to you for free, but doesn't necessarily uh, entail freedom. And that is why uh, Richard Salman introduced free, I, I libre, open source software. I, I'm not... Uh, libre, yeah. libre in Spanish entails such freedom. Yeah. I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not downplaying Richard Stallman's importance in. Like I said, he's a champion of free software. Uh, he's very important. Uh, he, he's he's pioneered basically this this entire scene for a lot of people, and he's made it made it more accessible to a lot of people. He's he's a very talented so, uh, uh, so, uh, data. What is he? Software engineer. Uh, what is his What is his uh, title? Um, anyways, uh, the reason he's the asshole of the week is is not because of his um, his accomplishments it has to do with the the Epstein case and uh, that he implied that uh, sex with young women was not sexual assault so um, they dove deeper into his uh, his his history and they found questionable comments about uh, uh, um, pedophilia uh, etc etc and uh, so he ended up quitting MIT and FOSS uh, so it's a very weird turn of events. Like I said, I, you know, I'm not downplaying what he did for open source software, and so open source or software is very important. That's why it's very interesting that we're getting into this, that he's kind of becoming the pariah. Um, so, what do you think ab about about this um, this this argument of him kind of being? "Quote unquote," in bed with with Epstein. Talking to me again? Uh, I'm just making you. sure. Yeah, yeah, you or Poopster? You can go ahead, Rodden. Poopster, do you want to go first? Okay, sure. Um, I think that um, I think it's just the time, you know, um, before everything blows up because Epstein was kind of the show, you know, rich and successful. Everybody kind of wants to be in his friend space. Like, you, you probably heard, you know, a lot of people, big, powerful people are connected to him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just that he probably wanted to be in that space, you know, um, whether for his influence or his favors, or, you know, maybe in his professional or personal life, you know. So I think he just got trapped into that, you know. Um, I, I think if he knew that um, that this going to blow up, I don't think anybody want to be in that kind of situation. So it's just that it happens at back end, you know, if you don't know him that well yeah, and you want to be friends with him, you kind of gravitate toward him, you know. He's well, charismatic, he's rich. Why would you defend it? Hmm? Why would you defend you know, something as, as horrendous as uh, pedophilia. I'm not defending it. No, no, no. I'm just well, saying I'm, that. I'm saying you, you're, you're ex trying to explain, you know, maybe his motivation behind, you know, aligning with the yeah. uh, but that's, why That's my feeling is that that's what he's trying to do. Um, he's just an unspoken you know. outcast, just going going with the flow, and he's just defending yeah, it. it you, know, you know, you know, they're also in this New England area, right? It's kind of small, but a very populated area. And kind of, you know, you tend to, like, know each other. You know, if you're a power player in that area, you know, like Trump and, you know, all these rich people, they kind of, you know, they know each other, right? So they make deals and, you know, just, you know, I don't know what that word is, like, doing favor each other, I guess. So you help me out, I help you out kind of thing between the rich. And I think, you know, if you want to be somebody, you kind of want to be in that group. And I think that's what happened to uh, RMS is that he's kind of up and coming back 
Then kind of he already made a name of himself, but he still need that uh, powerful people behind him, right? So I think that kind of got him into it. But then again, I don't know his personal life, so you know he might be a you know into the young girl thing. I don't know. So but who knows? Who knows? from a from a third point of view, you know, I think that's what possibly could have happened. So that's my take. What do you think about this, uh, Rodden? All right. Um, and where to begin? Um, first off, uh, I think uh, we all, um, even if you're not into free software, mm -hmm. I I couldn't care less if you're not. I, I'm not talking to you sure. guys. You know, I'm gotcha. talking to the audience. Uh, we all should be very grateful for what Richard Matthew Salman did back in the days. If it weren't for Richard Matthew Salman, we wouldn't have MX, we wouldn't have GNEU, because it's worth nothing that Linux is not Linux own. Linux is the kernel, and GNU is the operated system, which means that Richard Matthew Salman coded all the things that you interact with um, on the user interface level. And Linux uh, Torvalds coded the kernel. The kernel is the thing that handles all the energy and the components with your hardware specifications on every handset and laptop and uh, desktop uh, PC. Being that said, I'm putting aside all these uh, prior history regarding the free software movement and the G and U um, thing. Uh, what happened with Richard Matthews Talman and his comments on that mailing list is very, how to say, it, um, ambiguous, let's say. It's very regrettable. Um, mm -hmm. I do not endorse or think that pedophilia is good. Uh, I don't think anybody should do. Uh, but I also want to emphasize one little thing. Mm -hmm. Richard Matthew Salman was not approving pedophilia or advocating for pedophilia. That is completely wrong. No, and of that, course, uh, the, I wasn't the, saying that he was, on. no. But, uh, you know, it's just the comments that he made lean in that direction. And if it caused him to quit both MIT and, and, and FOSS, then that's a pretty hefty thing. You know, yes, there, there is a, a lot, a bunch, plethora of uh, misinterpretation and misleading headlines all over the mainstream media because what they're trying to say is that he advocated or endorsed or say, oh, I like pedophilia. And that is completely wrong. No. What he said is that um, he was okay with consent pedophilia which uh, in a nutshell means that he was saying if both parties for any reason that I'm not going to go into right, right, right. now That's agree a great area, indeed. to to do the activity that is fine and what what the mainstream media is missing out on is exactly this he was saying constant pedophilia not pedophilia itself so um just to wrap up my thoughts and to be very bold on this Fuck the mainstream media and yeah. fuck everybody. And yeah. of course, uh, just to lessen, the, to clean the air a little bit, um, Richard Matthew Stallman did not resign from his presidency uh, position. Okay. Um, uh, uh, how to say it? Um, by himself, he was forced into the Free Software Foundation board. Right. Okay. Say, you need to resign. And he was forced to, which is okay, because yeah. given all this turmoil and confusion, it's more than appropriate that it had to happen. Um, so and after you've been the president of the foundation for more than 40 years, uh, I mean, uh, dude, just to step down and go do something else. He has encoded it for years already. I right. think he was, it was time, it is time to have a newer, Phase from for, for the free software movement at the Free Software Foundation itself, and yeah, right. I, I'm very positive 
about the future. Um, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. But I surely do not appreciate all the mainstream media bullshit no, and I don't the lies that are up there. No, go ahead. I'm good. I, I think I, I say everything okay. that I had to say about Richard. No, yeah, I mean, uh, w with RMS, I mean, it, it may be un unwitting that he became the asshole of the week, but really, um, it's just maybe maybe he tripped into something that, that he didn't really understand he was doing himself. I mean, I, I really don't know. We're, we're going to see, a, a, probably, as, as uh, time goes on, I don't have the, the actual quotes that, that, that he uh, had in front of me. I just brought this up really quick because I, I wasn't really uh, prepared for the show tonight, and actually the the it fit into our our entire um, our our entire uh, show about you know free software, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, but yeah, I I think that uh, this could open the door for a new president for FOSS and a new uh, era of free and open software that that's not limited to um, people who know who RMS is, because a lot of people don't, you know. Um, so, yeah, it, yeah, it could and, be a good thing. And I think it's a great thing that it happened, uh, in yeah. fact, because many people in this niche space that uh, the floss space is, many, many people um, had Richard Stallman like uh, he was a savior, a lord, uh, they were looking up to him blindly. They they mm -hmm. they were not mm, seeing his mistakes or his flaws. And when you have a uh, president for more than forty years, and you keep um, having these fans just to the to speak, so to speak, that is very not good. No, because no, no. if we're having a free software movement, we all should not have okay for having lords or saviors or centralizing the power or our ideas. On the contrary, we should be decentralized, sovereign, and self-sufficient. This is true. I see a RMS in the same realm as uh, Trump, where their uh, support base is kind of like cultish. Yes, yeah. it, it has become a cult, and I'm very happy that it, it's coming to an end. Uh, although, yeah. as, as I stated previously, I am very grateful for what Richard Matthews Talman did it back in the days. Yeah, definitely. You know, we didn't want to downplay any of that, that's for sure. I mean, just like, you know, uh, John McAfee. You know, John Mac McAfee was, was a very prominent character in early uh, cybersecurity. I mean, he's a lot different now, but... Um, you know, I think it happens when you get old. <laughs> you get crazy. Maybe. Uh, Rod, you ever see that video of RMS eating that stuff from his foot during... Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. That is disgusting. <laughs> I know. The fungus. Yeah. That's another thing he's well known for. Yeah, the foot eating. Besides God. his other earlier um, <laughs> accomplishments. God damn it. Why are you doing with your life when you do that on a camera? <laughs> what the right. fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, not a good face for uh, for free and open software. If, <laughs> if that's... So, yeah, maybe it's a good thing, obviously. A blessing in disguise. Uh, you know, I hope that he can rebound from this, maybe. Because, uh, obviously, maybe he was insensitive to, to what he was saying. But, um, yeah. It's, uh, it's he's definitely, definitely an eccentric thing. dude, man. It's he's like, in, cool. extremely eccentric, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I, you know, he's considered like what genius, right? Sort of. Sure. So you know, geniuses are kind of out there, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like me. No, I'm not a fucking genius. I'm an, I'm just a regular. Hey, hey, you drop the eagle. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, but yes. Um, to add to that idea, um, nerds or geniuses or let's just say intelligent people tend to be, uh, so to speak, weird, uh, socially awkward, uh, so on and forth. And we're human beings. We're allowed to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We're allowed to be weird. Um, we're allowed to get worked up. 
I myself, you both know me very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I kind of get too heated too quick. And I acknowledge that. And, and I may say things or do things that I may regret later. I just lose my mind, man. And it's natural. Everybody's a fucking human being. That's true. I mean, I, I don't, I don't fault anyone. You know, I, I'm, I'm a pretty forgiving dude. Uh, you know, and especially over the internet, it's, it's extremely difficult to piss me off. You know, uh, so you know, everybody's got their quirks, and everybody's got their strengths. Everybody's got their weaknesses. You know, it's, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It takes, it takes them all to, to make the world go wrong, round. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, somebody said this recently. Nothing is ever too good or too bad. Meaning don't be too hard on yourself and also don't take too much pride on your victories. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. Pride is, is definitely a killer. Like, uh, for Americans, uh, you know, Americans have too much pride. It's like, uh, pride, it's like the pride virus. It's like if they're not pride, if they're not proud, overly proud or overly patriotic, then then you know you're some there's something wrong with you or something like that. But there's uh, there's something to be said for being humble. Uh, you know I you know I respect people that were humble rather than people who brag about their accomplishments. You know it's uh, there's a saying uh, pride before the fall. So well pride before the fall. I think that was uh, what was that from. Is that from Milton? John Milton? Uh, this Paradise Lost? I don't know. No, actually, there. well, for what I remember, is uh, from a uh, well, rival uh, football coach. Yeah, well, I think it's Milton. <laughs> yeah, you take it from Milton, yeah. Okay. Um, well, we've got a few other things to talk about, interesting things going on in the world. Um you know the free software thing. Privacy is very important. I'm glad we got it, got to speak about that tonight. Uh, so I have this article. Here's what happens to your brain when you watch porn. You want to know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, for many people, watching porn may be part of an everyday routine. It goes a little something like this. In a fleeting moment of boredom, arousal, or a combination of both, the, what, you head to your site of choice, make a few click, quick clicks to your preferred content, stare at your screen for a few minutes, and hopefully get off. Then, in all likelihood, you close the tab and go about the rest of your day or night without giving it another thought. So, what happens to your brain when you watch porn? Well, let's just say it can have a pretty pretty powerful impact. <laughs> this is interesting. I guess. Yeah. yeah. So apparently, um, in the uh, the scientific journal Neural Mage, um, they examined brain scans, MRI scans of male porn viewers, and showed enhanced activity in the ventral stratum, uh, ventral striatum, straight. I don't even know how to say that. I'm sorry. I'm not. A, I'm not a biologist. <laughs> don't no. watch porn. That's yeah. bad. Mm, okay. Porn is bad. So. Um, yeah. So the, the the porn essentially reduces dopamine. That's what that's what this is saying. This is a pretty dumb article, actually. <laughs> I just I just tagged a bunch of stuff that was that was interesting headlines and I didn't even read them. This is a really long they, article. We know that you know sex reduces uh, releases endorphins. It's not like a secret. Uh that's the thing with the news right now. They they include a lot of clickbait headlines. Exactly. Um and you believe it's good, but when you open it up and you read through the very first or two paragraphs, you're like, um, who wrote this? I want to hit punch them in the face. <laughs> yeah, no, man, I get that all the time. It pisses me off to no, re- to no end. <sighs> oh, this is something interesting. Um, I know uh, here in Real Liberty Media there are a lot of uh, uh, gun rights advocates. Um, and I have no problem with that. I, I have no problem with, with uh, you know, 
legal gun ownership and the right to bear arms and stuff like that. Um, but Colt Firearms, um, in an article, September 19th, stated that uh, they're ending its production and sales of AR-15s due to lack of public demand amid excess market capacity. And that's pretty I'm interesting. I'm for banning that automatic weapons. I mean, what do you need it for? It's well, a killing weapon, you know? I mean, I'm for the uh, right to bear arms, you know, own, own a pistol, a shotgun, you know? Yeah. But an automatic killing device, you know, it, I find that a little too much for... Yeah, for civilians... The average American... Not necessarily necessary. You know, I guess... I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to stand on any any particular side of this argu argument. But I'm taking a side. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're they're rifles made for for um, military and law enforcement, and 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 somehow the populace has them. Yeah, apparently you could buy those weapons freely, but you can't buy beer. Unless you're 21 or something, right? I don't know. I, I believe 18 you can buy a rifle. Um, yeah. An automatic rifle. But you can't buy a beer at 18? Nope. Nope. That's a weird one. Uh, yeah, with the same thing with, um, you know, signing up and dying for your country uh, in the military. You know? Yep. Yep. I don't know. It's interesting. I do have a very deep voice. Oh, the air fifteens are not automatic. Well, um, semi-automatic, right? I, you know, I I understand that there's a difference, but that's yeah, close enough. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, it's interesting. Um, it's an interesting development. No, yeah, yeah. The air fittings are. I, I, I think I, um. I think I misspoke when I said automatic. <laughs> Anyways, I, I don't own one. I never owned one. I'm sorry. I apologize if I misspoke. Um. Anyways. <sighs> what, what's your stance on, uh, on weaponry, uh, Rod? Uh, I come from Venezuela. Um. Mm -hmm. There we do not have any official, any legal law regarding guns. Uh, for me, it, it is very unknown and new um, to go to Walmart or any mom and pop store and actually buy a gun as right. long as you have a, a sort of ID for that. Um, I, I have mixed thoughts on it. Um, um, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know how to put it, but I, I'm like, yeah, we should have gone freely, but at the same time, I'm like, um, no. So if, if I were to advocate for a middle ground between the two positions, mm -hmm. I think we need to stay in this, uh, yes, you can purchase a gun. But here comes the important thing. Mm -hmm. We need more um, psychological uh, education uh, because the, the way it works right now is like anybody, even with uh, mental health issues, um, can get a gun. So um, I don't know. If that gun ends up in, in a guy, and I'm not saying that... Uh, trouble people, mental health issues uh, yeah. that people are suffering. Uh, I'm not down talking them or saying that, are, that they are less than me or anybody else. But I think it's important to, to first run a deep background check before you issue uh, uh, yeah. this type of ID that allows you to get guns. And, yeah, I, yeah. and I hope these these sort of education or middle ground between yes and no 
um, will help uh, prevent these massive shootings that keep popping up in the U.S. and that keep, uh, to be honest, um, worsening my depression. Um, right, right, right. I, I don't think massive shootings should happen for any given reason. And this um, uprise of white supremacism that we keep seeing with this current presidency is, to say the least, worrisome. Um, I think it's important for humans to review history. And if we already knocked out the Ku Klux Klan, why the fuck we're having them back? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we fought the Civil War once. We don't need to fight it again. <laughs> That's essentially the argument there. Um, I, it's fear. I think, I think the whole racism thing is fear. Um, uh, indoctrination, yes. fear. Um. That's that's the main. That's one of the key problems, not only in the U.S. but we as a species, that we keep forgetting history, and those who do not study history keep to uh, stay repeating itself. Yeah, doomed to repeat it. If you don't go back and study World War First. World War the Second, the Cold War, the crisis with the missiles and Cuba, so on and so forth, you're going to keep circle jerking and killing each other for the stupidest reasons ever existed. I totally agree. I mean, it's it's a losing battle. Um, you know, we're, we're forced with echo chambers all around us these days that, that reinforce ideals, and it all gets, you know recycled and chopped back into the machine and people find different ways to say the same thing uh you know it's like mental warfare it's um it's interesting so uh, you know uh, i hope I, that we can learn from our mistakes but what are you gonna do sadly it seems like we're not on um, the less educated populace the less educated that people are mm. in any given nation the more um, easily uh, persuaded, um, extorted into mm. beliefs and violent thoughts they are. And that is very, very concerning. It and is. this goes packed with the free software. Sorry that I keep talking about this. Okay. I'm like, I cannot shut up about Briar free software. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But uh, this, this main idea sort of circles back to that topic because I think the main uh, bear, the main action that we can take every single individual is education. The more we get our word out, our thoughts, the more we discuss it, the better. And th this also reminds me of something that I, I keep thinking of ever since I mm -hmm. came to the U.S. Uh, late 2016, that's where I landed here, um, that you Americans um, avoid these topics. A, uh, taxes. B, politics. And C, religions. I know, I know, everybody mm. has their strong opinions, and they might get heated, and blah, 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 blah. Mm. Whatever you have to say, just to be blunt here, I don't give a flying fuck. <laughs> we need to talk about these three topics as much as we can. Because when we do not, we elect presidents like Donald Trump. Yeah, essentially. That are fucking clowns. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting administration, man. It's, uh, you can't make this shit up, really. The, I, I once See, tweeted this in, on my... Real Liberty Media thinks we're talking about gun control because he thinks we want 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 him to take away his guns. Um, but no, we're not talking <laughs> about that. He, he keeps, like, shit-talking us and everything. <clears throat> but uh, I guess some people just can't listen. But whatever. I don't care. He said he was going to stop listening uh, a while ago uh, and called us retards. 
So, uh, but he keeps going. So I don't know how much he's drinking or, or what what his deal is, but fuck him. Eh, fuck them. Um, and I lost my train of thought just because some asshole said some bullshit. But whatever, keep going. Yeah, well, uh, no, I'm, that's uh, that's all I really had to say. But um, we're rounding up on the top of the hour here. We have uh, about three minutes left. So um, awesome! Uh, before I forget, mm-hmm. uh, thank you very much for having me on. Oh, and, great, man! This is awesome. And the thought that I, <laughs> I got it, I think I once upon a time wrote on my Twitter account that the the opium of the 21st century is populism. Yeah. And what I'm trying to say is that given that these less educated populists are getting uh, undermined or easily handled by the bigger guys in the scheme, um, the populism has hijacked the politics. And that's why we have this right-wing clown, which is Trump, and this leftist clown, which is Maduro, the current president of Venezuela. So, yeah, the, the cancer that we need to fight against is populism. Every every single time a politician says, oh, I'm going to give freebies and be the best president of the world and blah, 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 and we're going to be the best, it's bullshit. The more they promise you, the, the, evil, the more evil they are. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely true. I mean, if we if we look at presidential campaigns, it doesn't even matter what what uh, you know what alignment, Democrat, Republican, they all promise the world, but they deliver on almost nothing. Um, you know, it's all come back to money. That's what it is. Well, yeah, there's a lot of money lobbying in Congress. It, it's yep. uh, it's a, until you're all of them lobbying, nothing will change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a. That's how I see it. Like, why is it even legal? You have to lobby. It's like blackmailing, you know, a high official. How is that even legal? I, I don't even get it. Yeah, it's it's a strange scene, man. You know, <sighs> I don't know. I mean, capital is good, but I think it's out of hand at times when everything revolves about money. I mean, you know, definitely. Uh, you know, that whole thing where, you know, capitalism, people, you know, hard proponents of capitalism, and I'm not socialist, I'm not communist, but, um, you know, I believe there's inherent wrongs in the capitalist system because, uh, you know, there's people that believe, okay, yeah, sure, it's a go out and get, get it system. Uh, you, a person can make themselves a millionaire in two weeks or whatever the fuck. But if you don't do that, fuck you, get out of my way, you're just not, you're just not a go-getter like me. It doesn't work like that. People ignore circumstance. Uh, it's not that easy, you know. They forget about things like white privilege, you know, uh, other things like that. Because it, it's fucking real. I mean, I don't know. It, it's, a lot of Americans are very disillusioned about about how things work and how the system works. It, it's not. It's not a cut and dry. It's not an equal stage for everyone. Even even in, within their own race, whites, it's it's not an equal stage. You know, we have economic uh, divides, racial divides, divides, ever, political divides. I don't know. It's not pretty. I think most Americans are manipulated actually by yeah. the media, uh, by their, you know. Yeah, that too. You know, they, they project everything into their eyeballs right now, so, with their social media and everything, so. Well, on that note. I think, oh, go ahead. I think we need to make more episodes because we have about uh, 60 seconds left, so we yeah. should be wrapping things up. Um, yeah. Thank you for having me on again. It was great I having you, I appreciate you this both. Is, this is deep, man. This is Thanks, Ryan. Good to have you on. Yeah, sure. Um... If anybody wants to hit me up, I'm on Twitter, at Rod and Will. Uh, please uh, give me a link to the website or anything, and I will make to, sure to repost it and everything. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, we will uh, we'll do that. So, 
Uh, let me get the awesome. outro music going. We'll so. get linked on, on IRC. We we will spread the word. Thank you for having me on, and I'm looking forward to do another episode anytime. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Rotten. Uh, and uh, I guess we'll close on these words. Privacy matters. Free and open software matters. They treat you well. They treat yourself. Be good to each other. <laughs> I am. Bye right bye. On. All right. Bye bye, guys. Bye bye. Bye. Peace. 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 Peace.